All right, this one is uh, very cool, very like graphic novel art style. Uh, Riley and Rochelle. Uncover the lives, losses, and stories of two musicians from opposite sides of the tracks as they become superstars, fall in love, and fall apart in this 90s narrative puzzle game. All right, trailer time. Art style is super cool. Looks like uh, good soundtrack. I love pop in the 90s. What more can you ask for? So this one comes out soon too, October 18th. All right, let's let's check it out. R and R. Was abrupt. Hey, welcome. Have a donut. Whoa, Dan. You've got storyboard set up. Absolutely. Ready to make Riley and Rochelle a movie? Um, of course. The way I see it. A movie. My skills and your access, we can't fail. I've prepared a few pitches. Ready? Uh, sure. Okay. She was a star with a heart of gold. I don't I like that there's no subtitles. He was a grifter from the tough part of town. Just give me a chance, Dad. Together they would form a bond of unbreakable love and music. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're laughing. Sorry. It just, uh, it just doesn't seem like the Riley and Rochelle I know. All right. All right. A little British. Irish. A little Irish sarcasm. I could have anticipated this. Let's try a different one. In a world with kept two lovers. Of In a world. world. Only one thing could bring them together. A fated encounter. A fleeting lens. A what? Yeah, I just don't think it's like that, Dan. They met at the Oscars. It's not like they were political prisoners. All right. All right. Last one. She was a good girl. Oh, he dear. A guy from the wrong side of the track. Dan. I'm beginning to think we don't know enough about our subject to make this movie. There's something amazing here. We just don't know what it is yet. <sighs> well, what can we do? Well, I've got access to their archives, right? The ones they lent me for the project and I had digitized. Oh, yes, those. Scraps of paper, endless unsorted notebooks with no dates attached. Yeah, exactly. I think I could spend a bit of time with them. Those notebooks, for example, I mean, they really shine a light on what they thought and felt. If we could just put some dates to those entries, it would be a start. All right, Neve, you take some time, go back to the source, let's find out what the story really is, and then we can make a movie. In a world where two lovers could never be together. I don't know how I feel about that intro. It's weird. All right, welcome to Riley and Rochelle. It's time to venture into their life story 
and explore their fascinating worlds. Your main goal is to find out the correct dates for their diaries. You can access the diaries by clicking on any book and inputting the date. When all the entries in the current collection are completed, the debt level will end. You can gather information to find out the dates on the clue screen. Here you have access to both visual and audio clues. The game is date accurate and makes use of real world events. Oh, oh, I like that. I like, um, uh, like needing to do real world research is kind of, kind of like a, a ARG, an augmented reality thing. You may also wish to listen to Riley and Rochelle's records to gain valuable information. Playing a record will also show the year it was made. Many other things to do as well. Look out for new objects appearing in your workspace. If you require transcripts of audio materials, please. Hmm. Okay. I kind of wish there were on-screen subtitles again, but. Uh, let me see. Ah. Okay. Uh, otherwise significantly, I see. Hmm. Well, I don't know. All fun and games, so you find the game devs are complete conspiracy theorists. Their real world events are questionable, indeed. Uh, what is, what is this? The brightness? You know, I, it, it's very stylistic to, oh wait, is there like background music here that's, it's very stylistic and all, but I, I don't know what these buttons do. It's the noise the setting buttons, settings button makes. No, I, I, I did that already. Okay. Um, so we've got, uh, so there's a pink Floyd mug here. Um, so we have to figure out the dates to go with these diaries. Riley, it's on the record. Worked at the radio station today. Robin is such a cool dude. He showed me how to calibrate the tape machine and rewire the dead strips on the mixing board. I asked him if he liked the kinks and he told me the story of the time he got into a fist fight with a very drunk Ray Davies in an English tea shop. Shattered fine bone china everywhere. Would have would love to have seen that. After Robin and I finished the repairs, he went down to join some lame radio station party. It was so great just to be out of the house and actually alone for once. This song came to me all of a sudden. Not sure what to call it. Don't think it's right for the band, though. Sadie will probably hate it. She stands on the corner picking her nails, and I'm just a poor boy who rides on the rails. But I know her sweetness, and I know her faults. This is Riley's year. It's on the record. Uh, she stands on the corner, picks at her nails. So, um, okay. Waiting for Love 1990. Worked at the radio. Okay, so. So we've got the diaries. We've got. Clues? Collections? And we've got the music. This is. N so we, we can see the year the albums were released. But. We need the exact date for these. So 
the year would have to be on or before he wrote these lyrics. Let's see what these do. Dear Mrs. Stone, thanks for coming down to the station yesterday. Yesterday, isn't it Riley? Mrs. Stone? Mr. Stone wants right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks for coming down to the station yesterday. It was lovely to meet you at our annual jamboree, and I hope you're doing well. I wanted to write to you, sorry for the formality, I'm a Brit, to let you know how Riley is doing at WRTI. You're right, he is an excellent worker like his dad. He has been a brilliant assistant with all this, with all supplemental tasks, but he also has much more to him. He has a real knack for musical equipment, and as such, we have moved him on to audio technician roles. I know this started as a summer job and something of a favor, but I must let you know that Riley has a real gift for music. For instance, today he sang me a song of his called Waiting for Love, which he said he'd written the day before. Aha! Aha, aha. It was astonishingly, astonishingly sophisticated for an adult, let alone a 16-year-old. I hope this isn't too forward. I know Mr. Stone wants Riley to go to mechanics college, but I'd urge considering some alternative options. My dad was also a union man in Lancashire, and I had to move across the Atlantic to not end up down the pit. Riley really has something, and I hope you can see it and allow it to flourish. Okay, so he said that Riley wrote Waiting for Love yesterday, August 21st. So, uh... So we're gonna listen for these lyrics, I suppose, just to make sure. Yep, there it is. So it's the day before August 21st. So the 20th of August, 1990, because that's, well. I don't, <sighs> I don't know that we can necessarily... Maybe this is the year that the song was written. Ta-da! Okay. Um, Rochelle. My mom was so proud of me. She had the biggest smile I had ever seen. What if they made a mistake there? I, maybe, I don't know. Um, in terms of the year, you think? Maybe. Uh, she always says you'll be queen one day, and now I'm one step closer. Was a letter written the day after the... Uh, the, the letter was written the day after the diary page. Yes. Um, the audience went nuts when they read the scores and crowned me Miss, Miss Quebec. Talent 10, interview 8, dress 9, poise 10. Oh, okay. So it's like Riley is like the kind of working class dude working at a radio station writing his own music. And Rochelle is a, a fancy the day before when he wrote the song B.
This is Rochelle and Osman. Ooh la la. I'm leaving with Osman in the morning. This news is not going over well. Mama doesn't understand. I told her Ke Breeze has been doing great and is getting played on radio stations in uh, Jean Kier and Sherbrooke. Le Fleur's Diner is ordering eight boxes of the tape since I suggested the Cascrute Cassette promo. Osman says we've made enough money to live in Quebec City for a few months. We'll record some new music, then head out on the road. I brought cupcakes for Stephanie today. She wouldn't even look me in the eye. I wished her a happy birthday and she practically shut the door in my face. She took the cupcakes first. Stephanie's got priorities. It was heartbreaking. Between her and Mama, am I being selfish? Osman says there's no time for drama. He says I should forget about them and not look back. I guess he's right. It's going to be 1992 soon and he's got a regional tour and a big showcase planned. After that, it's success all the way. All right, well, it's going to be 1992 soon, so it happens in 91. Oh. Could you give a little introduction and tell us about yourself? What Maybe happened to Stephanie this transcript? I'm a payroll administrator for the municipal government of trois -Rivières. There we go. How did you first meet Rochelle? My parents moved to trois when I was in grade two. I didn't know anyone, and I remember being really nervous. I met Rochelle at the local YMCA. She was born October 18th, exactly one week after me. So naturally, we clicked. She also had Naturellement. concerns trying to fit in. Looking back now, I can see how tough it was for Rochelle and her older brothers trying to fit in in such a small and remote town. People can often be unaccepting. I should know. We were best friends straight away, which pretty quickly turned into a romantic relationship. We were together in secret from ages 13 through 17, until Rochelle started leaning heavily into her faith. Catholic. Anyway, she broke things off. It was very hard for me when she started going out with Osman after the pageant. Didn't you compete in Mademoiselle Quebec as well? I did it to support Rochelle. She needed help putting the outfits together and mostly managing her mother's nerves, which became overwhelming come competition time. It was draining for Rochelle to be around her mother like that. I love Bernice and I know she meant well, but after Rochelle met Osman, things definitely changed. Bernice's energy it just changed completely. Tell us about Osman. He was one of the pageant judges, like the big name judge, with some connection to Eurovision or something. Rochelle, that night, she looked amazing. She sang her song and the audience roared with applause. I remember looking down into the judge's table and saw Osman was giving her this crazy standing ovation, clapping his hands and hooting like a seal. I'd never seen anything like it. She moved away suddenly. How did that make you feel? Tell us the date. I'm not going to lie. It was brutal. Rochelle and I already had plans. We were going to move to Montreal, get an apartment and study music at Vanier College. We had a lease for a place and everything. Then Rochelle called me and told me she was moving away with Osman. Is that how your relationship ended with Rochelle? Is that why you're here? To dig into her relationships? Question her lovers? Well, I'm glad. Because you know, there's a lot of focus in the magazines and such on the men in Rochelle's life. Osman and especially Riley, that cheesy frat house blues guitarist. Well, I'm happy to discuss our relationship. Anything to stop people from putting a label on Rochelle. Trying to make her fit into a box, like everyone else. Do you listen to Rochelle's music? I am proud of her, but her music, it's not for me. My wife loves it, though. She loves Strong. Hmm. So I don't... Uh...
Um, hmm. So I know what her birthday is, is October 18th. And we know that she moved away suddenly. Ah. Oh, that was always there. I, I missed the, that button. I wish her a, ah, 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 I wish her a happy birthday. She practically shut the door in my face. Okay, so it's on October 18th is exactly one week after me. So Stephanie would be born on October 11th. And so this is 91 October 11th. Yeah. A broken heart, her breeze. All right, so I, I think one chapter is good to get a, an idea, but let's look at this music quiz. Hi, Niam. Dan here. Time for you to get really familiar with... Oh, I see. Gotcha. So... Interesting. So you, you gotta really get familiar with all the music. So are there... I guess there's 14 different tracks. One, two, three... Six, Oh, there's even more than that. There's 16 tracks. Um, so this, all right. So this game is uh, a cool idea. Basically, um, you know, learning about these two people on uh, how they got to uh, how they got to where they got together and um, came together, made music, uh, going through. Gotcha. Um, this. Some of the choices, like, uh, I really wish there were subtitles apart from the transcript that's available. Um, that's a, that's a pretty big accessibility thing that, um, I am a big proponent of as someone who often has difficulty with audio auditory only things, which I, I guess if it's a game based around this, this soundtrack that they wrote and music and, and stuff like you're going to want it to have an auditory component, but, um, having more responsive subtitles and not just having to scroll through a transcript would be, I think, preferable. But um, it's a cool idea. Yeah, this is one to keep an eye on. Uh, this is Riley and Rochelle, uh, named after the two people. All right, I'll uh, put the link to this one in the chat as well. And uh, check it out if you are so inclined. <laughs> 